watching CBS 2 News This Morning in High Definition. It is a tragedy. It's hard enough for adults to try and comprehend, but for children, it's even worse. Yeah, with us this morning, psychologist Dr. Harris Straightner. Thank you for joining us this morning. This area has just been through a storm that devastated. Uh, and, and as we said, it's a, this is a terrifying reality for, for adults and mm -hmm. for parents, but it has to be especially scary for children. H how do you even begin the conversation with them? You really need to think about age groups. Um, if a child is below the age of seven, you really want to try not to discuss it too much. Turn the TV off. Mm. Uh, youngsters that age often have not fully grasped object permanence, constancy. So they may see it on TV, see it again, and think it happened again. Mm. Turn the TV off. 7 to 12, you really want to answer their questions when they ask them, but also li limit some of the exposure. And then teenagers, of course, will ask questions, and you should just talk to them. But make sure that if a youngster has an older sibling and they're playing a computer game, a virtual game, they can't be doing that. Mm -hmm. That can't go on right now because, again, there's a confusion between what reality is and what's on the computer screen. You're talking about those yeah. very violent mm -hmm. games that kids are playing these days. Specifically, especially for the younger children, what do you say? Because some of them very young and hear it from other mm -hmm. kids. And when they say, what happened, why did, why did he do it? We have, to, we have to just be honest and say, we're not sure, but you're safe now. That's mm -hmm. got to be the takeaway. You are safe now. It's over. Something horrible happened. And, and you, well, obviously, you change the words if, if the youngster is very young. Mm -hmm. But, you know, certain horrible things happen or bad things happen. There are bad people that do bad things. And then you say, but you're safe now. Everything's okay. Yeah. And that's what every single discussion has to end with. Over the next week, we're going to start seeing the funerals mm -hmm. and the small caskets, which is going to be unbearable. But I, I wonder if that's going to raise the issue of mortality with children that don't think in those terms mm -hmm. ordinarily. Yeah, it definitely will. And they're not going to understand it. And that's where the clergy comes in, that uh, people understand uh, that they need to speak to their kids about having faith, about life. It's also Christmas and mm -hmm. Hanukkah, and uh, we need to focus on that a little bit, but at the same time, turn this into a spiritual moment and try to explain to them, we need to think of people who might not be with us right now. And you might not see Joey or Mary, but they're with us, they're in our hearts, and that's how we remember people. While this happened just yesterday, yeah. uh, it may take some time before the kids start asking questions or we see signs and then that we need to talk to them about what's happened. What are some of the signs we can look for if they're not verbal about? Changes. The, 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 the big thing there, the key thing there are changes. Changes in sleeping habits, night terrors, mm -hmm. uh, eating habits, seeing if suddenly they don't want to eat, if they don't want to go to school, go out to play. If they are showing some sort of anhedonia, unhappiness with even the holidays, um, and, and just changes from what they basically do. All right, Dr. Harris-Straightner, thank you very much for sure. your insight. All right, thank you.